Trouties! Not sure if this is on and this is working. I've been having technical difficulties with my internet connection lately, so apologies if it's a little wonky. But if not, welcome! It is Friday, so I am live at 1 p.m. Central here at Manic Trout. Today, I can't believe we have not talked about this yet. We are going to talk about how to store and organize your jewelry. So I have, I'm putting this back a little bit. I've touched on this subject before, but we have not dedicated a whole episode to it. So here we go. This is unbelievably episode number 50. Thank you so much to all of you Trouties who have watched all 50 episodes. I am, if you don't know me, Sierra Bailey. I'm the designer, the maker, the everythinger here at Manic Trout. And Manic Trout, if you don't know, is my jewelry company that I have had for 15 years. I live at the moment in Austin, Texas, and I am coming to you live today with tips and advice on how to organize that jewelry collection of yours. So I am going to talk about jewelry in a broad way, but I'm also going to talk very specifically about when you collect larger statement jewelry, because if you are a trouty and collect manic trout, your jewelry is pretty heavy, it's pretty big, and it's not going to fit into the, let's say, normal or traditional storage things. You know, like my mom, I remember her telling me like when she was a little girl, she had like a jewelry box and she still had it as she got older. Those don't really exist anymore. And I think it's because jewelry has become a little more varied in size and uh, quantity. So we don't all have that obvious common like jewelry box in the middle of our dressers that women in past generations have. Now we get a little more creative and that is by choice and because like the traditional options don't always work. So I'm going to talk about a few different ways today. Um, I'm going to also preface this with like Pinterest is your friend in this example um, of organizing and storing because oh my goodness, you can get so lost down the rabbit hole on Pinterest. Um, although I will say sometimes when you go look on Pinterest, like it gets like, um, really in like one direction. So very, like if you, whenever you search on Pinterest for something, the more specific your search, the more specific you'll kind of come up with things. Um, Cause sometimes if you just search like jewelry storage and organization, you get like a lot of just the most popular, not necessarily a variety. So there are of course uh, DIY and store-bought options for storing your jewelry. You can get as traditional or as creative as you want. So let's dive in. I, as always, have a trusty index card full of notes, so I try not to forget anything I wanted to share with you today. All right, so I'm gonna um, also give like little kind of tips in uh, mixed in here. And um, as always, I don't know if you've noticed this, but I have been on Mondays writing a blog post that goes along with the video on Manic Trout under the blog. So if you are watching the video and just, you know, can watch it for a second and then are like, oh, but that kind of interested me, I usually just sum up my bullet points quickly on the blog on Mondays so that you can uh, come back and revisit the points that I'm making. Um, and if you sign up for the inner circle email, which is also on manictrout.com, um, I make sure that you get a link to all of these things, the video and everything. So if you're catching a glimpse of this in passing and want to come back, Make sure you're in the inner circle. I'll, I'll be sure to let you know. Okay, so let's get started. I am a firm believer, as we've talked about many times, in changing it up all the time. So when I'm talking about like ways to store and organize your jewelry, I'm a big fan of try something out. If it doesn't work, try something again. Um, I'm also, as many people that are organized, I'm, I'm not into like buying all the things to organize or like investing a lot of money in like the system necessarily until you really know what works for you. So I, it's not like I, I wouldn't personally like build something to store my jewelry because I create so much that I don't always like to like go out and DIY things. But I would say that in my own experience, I usually like will try kind of a system. Like if it's, um, if you're going to want to keep your jewelry, let's say organized in a lot of different containers in a drawer, I would for a few days kind of put my jewelry in the drawer to be like, do I want to open up the drawer to get the jewelry out all the time? And if I find myself not wanting to do that and kind of looking for it elsewhere, then I wouldn't bother to go kind of invest in that system. So I like the idea of like try out things before I'm not telling you to like go out and buy some crazy system to store your jewelry. I'm kind of giving you more like uh, some ideas to kind of like try out and go in because we're all different. We all like look for things differently. Um, for example, 
Some people like to have their jewelry tucked away so they don't see it, which is great on the keeping it from not tarnishing and things like that. But some people want to make it artwork itself and have it out and displayed. So there's right there two different kind of ways to approach. Some like to have it, let's say, on like a dresser. Some like to have it maybe on a wall in their bathroom or in their closet. So it just depends a lot. When I'm saying these things, you know, everything would be tweaked for your own way to do it. So, uh, you know, like I personally don't use drawers for anything, but I love the idea of having jewelry in drawers. I dream one day of having my closet like built out and redone. The problem is that I can't decide how I would want things. <laughs> it's like I'm saying, I change things up all the time. So I haven't, I don't want to like commit to one way, but I do really like the idea of having jewelry in a drawer. I, I like dream of like a very narrow, large drawer that comes out, kind of like what um, like architects shelves are, where it's like low and flat. And then you can just see all of the pieces laid out and you pull it out and it all comes out. I don't have room for that, but wouldn't that be amazing? That's like dream scenario but you know, not really realistic. I, in my own closet for the past few years, I found at, um, I think Home Goods one day, Home Goods is a great place to find inexpensive kind of organizing things if you're into that, uh, for jewelry storage. I found like, they're like picture frames that have a door on the front and then they have little dowels and they hang jewelry nicely. However, they have like two layers. The necklaces are kind of too big that you can't hang necklaces on the lower one bracelets are too short, and then there's no place to put earrings, so it's not a complete system. I have to have like a few things going on. I have yet to find like an item that fulfills all my needs, so I kind of piece it together. It doesn't look like streamlined, um, and the way I hang my earrings are like on a hanging on the wall thing, and they do, I will admit, like they get tarnished, and I know they get a little dusty, so again, I, I love the door that closes for the necklaces, and I really do dream of like big flat drawers that would come out, that, you know, one day, that's, I, I hope, I hope one day to have that, but, you know, we can't all have what our dream systems are, so in the meantime, we try other ways. I know that uh, Trouty, one of the Trouties, Abigail, had posted the other day her entire jewelry collection was like in her closet and things and it like the whole thing like went down and like jewelry was everywhere and got tangled. Fortunately, Manitra jewelry, which she has a ton of, uh, is bright and stands out. So she said that was the easiest to get out of everything, but it still was a big mess and she had to deal with that. So, you know, it's uh, unfortunately like not all jewelry organizing systems are perfect in every way. So like I said, my dream is to have a very thin flat drawer. Those drawers don't exist that often, but if you have a, a deeper drawer, um, I have in my own searching on Pinterest seen a variety of things from like drawer organizers to using like um, like uh, kitchen organizers, like egg cup holders and things to put your uh, jewelry in like little cups. One of the Trouties posted on the Facebook page, um, Cindy, that she got... They were, I think, like almost like um, utensil dividers, and she put those in her drawer, and then the necklaces could fit lengthwise. Again, the Manic Trout jewelry is pretty big, so it doesn't, anything that is designed for like thin chains and hanging, you're not going to be able to really maximize the use of it because these take up like what four thin chains would be, and they're heavy. So you don't want to end up in a situation where things are falling down. Um, another thing is that they do make actual furniture that is. I think, oddly, Pier 1 has tons of options in this. They're big, though. They are they call them, like, jewelry dressers or jewelry armoires or something. So you can actually get things that are, um, like, that they have a ton of little narrow drawers in. But again, I don't, I've only kind of looked at, oh, we have a comment from a Trouty here, which I'll read to you in a second. Um, I, I haven't really looked in them, but I feel like they're a little bit, again, made for like the smaller jewelry. So I don't know, like my rings would never fit in a traditional ring holder. They're just too massive. So if you collect a lot of statement jewelry and you know, if you love jewelry from designers that go big, like the organizing systems don't always work, but they are cool and it keeps everything together. All right, so Barbara says she hung up a really large mirror and went to the dollar store and bought over the door hangers that have hooks. Oh, and hook them over the mirror. She hangs up all of her necklaces and bracelets. I love that. And then you can see them and that's really awesome. And those, you know, Ideas like Barbara's, Pinterest is a wonderful place to find things like that and you can really get inspired. And I have found that often I'll look on Pinterest and then I'm like, oh, I have something like that. 
I do have like one little closet where I will stash things that I don't necessarily want to like go donate at the moment. And then a lot of times when I'm trying to think of something, I'm like, oh, I have something in that closet that will work. A small drawer utensil holder once came in great handy for um, like my husband's like razor and stuff in the bathroom. That could be great for jewelry. Not the prettiest though. So there's, <laughs> I'm going to get to that in a second though. All right. So another thing is like what Barbara does, hanging things on the walls, hanging things on frames. Um, from my doing shows, like from those days, we would all get really creative with displays on tabletops. And one of my favorite things was when somebody would buy a really big frame for like a painting of some sort. And then on the inside, they would put, um, like they would either use like burlap or canvas or make a cloth that would hang instead of where a print or a painting would go. And then they would, you know, either put hooks in it if it's wood, or this is where the really like DIY stuff comes in, or you kind of can hang stuff in there and then put it on the wall and you've essentially like made art out of your jewelry. Those look beautiful and I absolutely am a fan of those. I'm just too lazy to go make that really. And honestly, that's the truth of that. Um, and I know a lot of you probably are like, just give me something made already. Uh, also, if you click around sometimes on Pinterest, you can click on things that are being sold. And Etsy actually is a wonderful place to go look for that. I don't know if you've ever seen those. If you go to Etsy and you search for like jewelry organizers, you'll see that stores come up of people that make things like that, that they're the people that are making all of the awesome Pinterest things and they'll sell them to you. And that's awesome because for me, I'd rather do that. Um, the next thing is to actually, uh, like if you have, my mother-in-law always hangs her um, necklaces on the corners of paintings like around the house. She likes them as art and that's a cool way to do it too. But there are definitely two different thoughts of people. Some people don't mind if their jewelry is scattered all around and like I like everything together at once. I like all of like the big necklaces together, all of rings together, you know, I'm, I'm like a, I like to... I like to have everything into, so it depends on kind of how you're looking at it that way. And excuse me if I seem kind of brain dead today. My allergies are horrible. Um, so there's also, like I mentioned in the beginning, the difference of like, where do you want the jewelry when you have it? If it be it scattered around the house, be it in your bedroom, be it in the bathroom, be it in your closet. I will say that uh, like with makeup, if you have a bathroom that gets really steamy, that's not good for makeup, for perfume, or for jewelry. Um, it leads to tarnish and it can like loosen stone settings sometimes over time for costume jewelry if they're glued in and stuff. Um, I, I don't have jewelry that has settings, but I'm, you know, I'm sure you have other jewelry. It makes me sad, but I'm sure it's true. So keep in mind, steamy bathrooms sometimes can be a little bad for jewelry, uh, like, um, I know that uh, like pearls, for example, if you go swimming, love salt water, but it's like the only thing that loves salt water. So it's just, yeah, water, be it you're swimming or in your bathroom. Think about that where you store jewelry. So I don't recommend that. But maybe you have a nowadays, like the trend is for big walk-in closets in all apartments and homes. So if it's a newer home, you have probably a big closet. Maybe you'll want it in there. Maybe you want it in the bedroom. It all kind of depends. I find that if I put things in my closet, I don't feel as much pressure to make it like decorative and attractive because I'm kind of the only one seeing it and when I'm getting dressed, so it becomes more utilitarian. But when I've stored my jewelry in my bedroom, I've done both, I'm much more into the display. And I have also, like when I'm using something in a closet, I'm usually more like uh, in a drawer, in boxes, or hanging, whereas in the bedroom I get more into like um, finding some cool like, uh, let's say ceramic hand that things drape over or using pretty bowls that they go in. I, I collect little bowls, so that's always a thing. Uh, even like vintage plates, things like that. And another thing is that really, I talked a little bit about displays that we as makers would make, but if you go to like Michael's, you can absolutely buy the same thing that you see at a lot of stores and things like that. You can get like the bus that I have behind me and use that. You can get like the the, like that for bracelets. So things like this are really useful too, especially if you want things like on display in your bedroom. So they're great options as well. Um, I see a lot of hooks, uh, like um, how I said about Pinterest. So I'll see people like actually put them into like wood and frame them or, you know, they'll have like a sign and then put the hooks on the bottom, like how a cup hook would go. You can use little teeny nails and nail those into things to create hooks. You can buy things that have hooks. I find those are great for 
linked together items. So like my jewelry all is linked together and it hangs really nicely on hooks. But sometimes if something is strong, it doesn't hang as nicely. And like um, if you have like a cuff bracelet, that's not gonna work at all. So uh, realize that you'll want to have different methods sometimes like hook things hanging on a wall are great, but those cuff bracelets, probably your stud earrings, um, anything like that are not going to be able to fit in that. So you may have to have a few kind of systems going together. Um, there are, of course, great jewelry boxes out there. Again, like the drawer, keeps everything clean, which is very nice. Uh, with those, you want to be really careful to not just have everything be a tangled mess. So the, like I would go like larger and flatter on all drawers or boxes because you can lay things out better. And if they have an insert, that's wonderful too, to put maybe the earrings on top, things like that. Um, I did also, in talking about hanging things on the wall, I found a few things. I kind of went looking on uh, Amazon for like uh, hanging a mirror that opens. And then on the like inside, there would be like dowels to hang. And on the back of the door are like a way to put stud earrings and things like that. So there are also, when we talked about furniture options, there are like hanging options as well, which are very nice. I call those like wall boxes. And those I think are um, a great option if you do not have dresser space. So if you don't use a, a you know, like a dresser area, but you do have to have a bit of wall where you can put them and as, especially with my jewelry, it gets really heavy. So if you have something like that, you really wanna make sure that it is attached to the wall in a proper way. Like in a stud, you don't want that to come crashing down because as soon as you start adding weight, that potential happens. So just keep that in mind if you're going to the wall box area. Um, another thing, you know, like I touched on are the found objects and sometimes it's great fun to collect things. You may even have things just around the house and then kind of create like a little seal life and then put the jewelry on it. I, like I said, I like that a lot if you are having this out on your like your dresser or like your vanity in your bedroom where you are seeing this as part of the decor all the time. Um, and it depends on what your style is. You may not like clutter and therefore drawer wall box. These are all great things. A lot of it has to do with what your philosophy is kind of on decorating. I will say that if you're a minimalist though, you're probably not a trout and you're probably not watching this, but hey, you never know. Um, more of you that are in the minimalist decor, I would say a nice sleek box, that's where your drawer comes in, something like that. If you have like a shabby chic or a very vintage decorated home, oh, go crazy and get pretty with it. You can do so many pretty things. Pinterest is your friend here. Are we getting fuzzy again? Sometimes it likes to focus on random things. All right, so the... I th oh, the other tip that I wanted to throw out there is that, you know, like I said earlier, a lot of like kitchen and bath storage. If you are, let's say, wandering the, the the home goods or, you know, Bed Bath & Beyond or something like that, don't just stick to like where you think you'd find the organizing or the jewelry thing. Look in the other areas. Look at office organizers. Look at bathroom and kitchen organizers. I, what, I found something. I was like in Target one day getting like light bulbs or something, and I ended up wandering down the aisle of like the tissue paper holder things and I ended up finding it was like a clear acrylic tissue holder like that you would take the tissues in a box and put them flat in which I was like oh they could get dirty I don't know but I ended up getting that and that works perfectly in a drawer for my toothbrush and toothpaste and I loved it so like you never know where you're going to kind of stumble upon an organizing thing for something and sometimes if I find something and it's really pretty out and it's inexpensive I get it and hold on to it it goes into that little like you know uh, shelf I was talking about where I kind of grab things from but this also brings me to something about any organizing really if you choose to go the route of buying containers to put your items in and organize always always buy more than you what you'll need if you're not doing the project right now you'll probably be able to use the thing later and even if it does take you a little bit usually like you know those big like hold everything stores like that they still have it store container store they'll let you return it you're better to have more so you can finish the project and not try to get the thing that matches. Oh, the other day I realized like when I redid part of our laundry room and I have all of these baskets of towels, I didn't buy like all the baskets. The way I thing, I, the way I organized it, I didn't buy as many as I should have. I should have bought enough to fill all the shelves and I didn't. And now I regret it because I can't find those baskets. And that was a hard lesson to learn. It made me very sad. So if you're organizing your jewelry and you're using like boxes, let's say, and let's say you want them all to match, buy more than you think you'll need. Not only that, hey, if you're a trouty, 
I know that you'll end up buying more jewelry at some point. So, you know, it's not like all of you come here and buy one item and then never shop again. Like we like variety. So <laughs> you're always better having a little bit of room to grow, shall we say. Um, let's talk a little bit about when you're actually organizing your jewelry. The number one rule of jewelry organizing for your own sanity is to always clasp your jewelry back together. So if you have a necklace or a bracelet that closes, always connect it. It's like the number one way of keeping your jewelry from tangling. I talked about this a lot. I did a video a while ago. It's a while back if you go and look in kind of the archives about uh, traveling and packing with your jewelry. So a lot of that was about how to not have things tangled. Number one rule is just close that clasp, especially if it's like a chain necklace. Woo, those chains get tangled so quickly, which uh, pro tip there, if you need to untangle really fine chain, use two really little safety pins um, as your hands to get in there to pull the chain and put it through the links. It will help you do that. But to avoid that to begin with, always close your necklaces. So especially if you're putting things like in a jewelry box just clo or on like a tray, close the necklaces. Um, we talked about some of these, but they are all, I'm going to reiterate because these are so important when organizing lids and drawers, dust free helps prevent the tarnish. Uh, beware of too much weight when you're hanging things because you know, the big gemstone jewelry, it's heavy. Oh, too much of it can really create a disaster as I've recently watched with one of you. I actually, two of you have sent me pictures of disasters that have happened from jewelry collapsing. That happens to you. I feel for you. I also want to remind you that you always can contact me if that happens and like your jewelry gets pulled apart or something. I'll fix it for you. Don't worry. That is in my jewelry care kind of policy page there. But note that if you've had a disaster, make sure you reach out to me to help you because I'll help your jewelry get back in shape. Another thing that I really enjoy for organizing is that sometimes I won't put all of my jewelry. Up. So if I have... Like right now I have a variety of like boxes, I have things on the wall, I have the hanging hooks. So I will rotate what is in the hanging hooks, like the things that I see all the time, and in the boxes that I see all the time. As a jewelry designer who wears their own jewelry and really enjoys, um, sometimes I get a little stuck and I wear the same stuff all the time. <laughs> so I have to force myself to wear other stuff, which I'm sure it's human nature I think to do that, you all go through it. So I like to rotate the jewelry. So I'm changing up. It's just like how you would rotate your closet seasonally. I like to kind of move different jewelry like to front and center so that I wear different jewelry. Otherwise, I'll just put the same thing on every day, which is fine if you're into that life. But if you're a trouty, you're probably not wearing the same jewelry every day. It's kind of like the whole point of man trout. I keep like molesting my thing here. Um, but yeah, I, I'm a big fan of rotating the collection. You can put the stuff away or you can just swap it around. It will make you wear different stuff. And that I think is a big part of keeping that collection organized and sorted is like keeping it like fresh so you're always feeling like you're wearing something different you know I've talked a lot in the videos too about how especially when women get to a certain age I know many of you trouties are career-minded and are wearing your jewelry to work so if you are at the stage of life where you kind of wear like a work uniform by switching your jewelry up you're kind of freshening your whole wardrobe so it's great to do that for like your, your style too um, now, another thing that I like to do is I like to group things kind of together differently. So I often naturally will put, like I said earlier, big necklaces together, like bracelets together, rings together, but sometimes I'll kind of just switch how I'm grouping them. And again, it's just like organizing your clothes hanging in your closet. The more you change things around, the different you'll wear them together. And you may stumble upon combinations that you didn't really realize that you like together. Uh, we talk a lot about... If you're either in an outfit that needs like a statement necklace, which I often, like I'm wearing the matching right now for that and I love it. Um, but I also am a big fan of, and I designed for the bracelet and then like big earrings. So sometimes just by switching around like the earrings by what bracelets they're by, you'll see different combos and huh, it's like a whole new outfit that you've figured out. Um, we talked a little bit about it, but the whole idea of like making your jewelry into art, like make it part of your decor. Make a, a wonderful display about it. Like make it do double duty. Not only is it making you feel like you're adorned in art, but it can stand as art in your house too. So jewelry is kind of great in that way, especially when you rotate stuff. Um, when I talked earlier about hanging jewelry, like on the corners of frames and stuff like that around your house, switch it up. Take something down from there, put it back in your bedroom to get dressed and then put different jewelry out there. So it's kind of a way to kind of keep things moving around too. 
Um, and yes, so that is all a bunch of uh, wonderful tips that I've gathered from, you know, around the internet and Pinterest about storing and organizing your jewelry collection. I also do have on manicchart.com, I have kind of like a, a jewelry care and cleaning tip. So if you're curious to like dive into the cleaning side, you can see that. And there was a video that I did, uh, I think a few months ago, I don't remember what number, but it, it's in the title, Jewelry Cleaning and Care, if you want to look into that direction. And now I have a little bit of behind the scenes news because I know that that is a fun part of these videos. So I have been talking a lot in the past year, which P.S. being at episode 50, I've been doing these for a year, which is crazy about how I have been offering everything that I can in silver and that I kind of, I think about maybe over a year ago, I started um, switching all of the non-menagerie pieces. And now as of last year, I started that doing more and more in silver. And as of now, in this year, in 2018, all new menagerie pieces are actually in silver or matte gold. So they're both plated. Um, it gave them just a little more of a velvety texture that feels a little bit nicer than just the raw brass head. But I, uh, <laughs> the January Menagerie Collection, I did do this, but before that I had not because it's a little bit overwhelming of how much more time it took that I underestimated and I'm a week behind. But as of now, when you go to manicchart.com, all of the spring, summer 2018 collection, the SS18, all of that jewelry now finally has photos of every piece of jewelry in both silver and gold. So if there is a, like this necklace, which I'm wearing the silver version of today as the bracelet as well, the gold is, where is it? Right behind me. But now if you look on that page of that necklace on the website, it will have like five photos of the silver version and five photos of the gold version. All of them are there. I didn't just do like one version of the silver. I did all of them. So all jewelry that has come out this year has that going for it. And I am really happy to finally be able to do that for you, Trouties, because I know that you silver-loving Trouties had to use your imagination, and that wasn't very nice. Uh, <laughs> but it was a little overwhelming of how many photos I had to take all together. I did have to do it in two waves with this collection because it was a really big collection. Um, but for going forward, I'll keep doing that. So if you are a silver-loving Trouty, you now just go to the new collection and look through and you'll see, I thought about trying to have a place like just to look at the silver photos, but there are so many that, and I don't have that for the gold. So yes. Oh, the sun has come out. Did the lighting change? Is that weird? Um, but from this point on, it will, should have it when I release the collection. I apologize on the delay, but hey, it's something new and exciting to check. Um, I also will next week, I know some of you really enjoy looking through like the PDF form. I will have the catalog of the everything currently available, including the new collection. So that is coming next week, as well as a live video on Fridays, because every Friday at 1 p.m., this is where you will find me. Well, Trouties, that was a, a great kind of discussion that I had with myself. Uh, <laughs> well, Barbara chimed in. That was awesome. And I appreciate that, Barbara, about collecting or organizing your jewelry collection. I am, of course, always on Facebook. That's where these go. They then go to the blog and YouTube. So you may be watching it elsewhere, but they stay up. And I love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments how you organize your jewelry because it's great to hear that. And I will, of course, always be on Facebook if you want to look for me. And on Instagram at Manic Trout, Pinterest at Manic Trout. I should start a board about these jewelry storing things. I don't know if I have one. I'll post that on the Facebook page. I thank you so much for watching. I will be back, like I said, next Friday at 1 p.m. Central. I'm Sierra Bailey. This is Manic Trout, and I'll see you next week.